Today, I'm going to rank every checkmate pattern there is. And a checkmate pattern is simply a common arrangement of pieces that deliver a checkmate. At number 36, I have the two knights versus a pawn checkmate. This is horrible for a lot of reasons, but first off, let me ask you, the viewer, have you ever had this situation before? The answer for probably all of you is no, because it is horribly, disgustingly, obscenely rare. However, let's imagine a fantasy world where somehow you get this. Now you have to answer the question, is this even a win? Oftentimes it is a draw, which is decided by where the pawn is. First off, there needs to be a pawn because if there's no pawn, it is quite simply a draw. There must be a pawn. Let's say it's on uh, a5 here. If it's on a5, it is a draw. But if it's on a6, then it is a win. But if we go one square over to b6, now it is a draw again. If we go another square over, now it is a win again. It looks literally completely random. Uh, if you're asking why, only God knows why. So, you know, help yourself. So that question is extremely confusing and hard to solve. Uh, but what is the actual process to even checkmating? Let's say you have this position. This is winning. First, you need to bring both of your knights in. So you can bring one knight in like this. They will start pushing their pawn. Then you can bring your king in. Let's say they push again. And after like knight f5 here, you bring the other knight in. They move their king around. Remember, you still cannot capture the pawn. It is automatically a draw because sooner or later you will stalemate their king. So you'd have to play a check. Uh, let's say their king moves over. Now you have to play some move like knight d8, which is already so hard to find. They're pushing their pawn again. You better checkmate fast because if you don't, they're going to promote and now you'll be losing. But here you do have a checkmate. I, it's simply way too rare, extremely confusing, and not worth for basically anyone to ever learn. At number 35, I have the Epaulette mate. This one isn't as offensive. This happens when you have an enemy king surrounded by two pieces, usually two rooks, and you have a checkmate with your queen like this. It cannot escape anywhere because you're controlling all the squares, and both of these guys are by the uh, rooks. Um, yeah, this one is just very, very rare. I did get it once. It felt fine, but it's very easy to prevent and not really something that will almost ever come up. At number 34, I have Blackburn's mate. This one isn't too bad. Uh, it's just very rare, and there's not really any bad checkmates, but this one does not really stand out too much. Uh, it's when you have a bishop, a knight, and another bishop in this combo, and you can play this check, which would be a checkmate, and all the pieces work together very nicely. It's fun, but sadly is going to be very, very rare. However, it can lead to some fun challenges, like uh, this position right here. You have a brilliant winning shot with queen takes h5 threatening this checkmate and if they capture you now have the uh, blackburn's mate it can be fun sometimes however it's very rare not very useful and not something that will really come up a bunch. Number 33, I have the bishop and knight mate. This one suffers from the same problems as the two knights versus pawn. It is uh, simply very, very rare and also quite difficult to do. However, it is better in both regards. However, not too much better. And as such, this is where it goes. Number 32, I have the Arabian mate. This comes when you have a well-placed knight and a well-placed rook and the enemy king is badly placed in the corner and you can slide your rook over and all the squares are covered, everything is defended, and you get a checkmate. This can be good, but it is simply too specific. Uh, you have to have a knight in a very specific spot, a rook that is on the seventh rank, their king must be in the very corner, and they must have no other pieces that will help prevent this, because if they have other pieces, this can be prevented pretty easily. At number 31, I have the Anastasia's mate. This comes when you have an enemy king on the side of the board and you have a knight that is controlling two very important squares and you can slide a rook all the way over and deliver a nice checkmate. The problem with this one is once again, it is very specific, it is very rare. However, I think it does have some more applicability. Like for example, you can have some nice puzzles like here in this position, you can play this check king has to walk over and now you can sack the queen so it does have some nice tactical potential they'll take back you can now slide the rook over they can block for one move and a nice checkmate at number 30 i have the hook mate this is when you have a pawn protecting a knight and also a rook all working in tandem and with that you can play a move here like rook to e8 check 
and all together his pieces that seem a little bit off are all coordinated very well protecting all the important squares and as such you can get a lot of nice checkmates uh, once again there's nothing too wrong with it but it's just not that common and not too applicable however this does have some nice tactical possibility like uh, in this fun game right here if you just promote to a queen then queen check and you're going to get back rank checkmated and now you cry in the corner so instead of that here you can win by promoting to a knight under promotion king has to move somewhere likely to g8 and here now knight g6 with the rook check and no matter where they go they're going to die if they go here then the rook comes in the corner the king is dead and if they come here well then we have the exact same mate we saw a second ago the hook mate rook 2 f8 check and they are dead so it does have some fun with it but overall is definitely mediocre at 29 i have the anderson's mate this is when you have a very nice pawn and their king is right next to it and you can play a check like this their king must back up and you can send your rook or queen all the way in with a checkmate this can be good but really only ever come to play if you're already crushing them which kind of limits its um situations where you can use it and also with that it's also just not that common altogether and as such it's not bad but this is where it's going number 28 i have the bowden's mate this one is very fun it happens when you have two crisscross bishops you can have one controlling the dark squares and the other controlling the light squares and you have crisscross applesauce the enemy king is dead this one is very fun it is a good attacking one however my problem with it is that unless the enemy king has long castled it is probably never going to come into play however it does have some nice tactical possibilities like uh, in this position you win with the ridiculously fun sacrifice queen takes on c6 sack and the queen because after they capture back now bishop comes to a6 and we get that same checkmate can be fun but sadly not too common or useful in a lot of scenarios at number 27 i have the balestra mate this happens kind of similar to the bowden's mate where you have in this case a queen controlling these squares and a lot of dark squares and then you have a bishop come in and together they harmonize very well and we control all the squares delivering a checkmate it's like fine i guess but outside of the actual checkmate there's not really many tactical possibilities it's kind of like a one-off thing really only useful in end games where you're already dominating it's fine i guess let's move on 26 i have the double bishop mate it's very similar to the bishop and knight mate just a bit better on all fronts uh it is easier to do you'll get it more of the time uh i mean it's very intuitive compared to the other ones like i have one game where i actually did get this ending and i managed to figure it out even though i never formally like you know learned this so you know it's good it's fine for what it is and yeah, let's move on 25 i have the vukovic mate this is when you have a king trapped on the back row you have a rook on the seventh and then you also have a knight and with this you can play a move here like rook to e7 check and your pieces all work together very well the knight controls these squares the rook checks the king and the rook is protected either by your own king or potentially a pawn or a bishop or another piece um it will not come up uh too often however i think it will come up if you ever have a situation with the rook on the seventh this is very likely to occur uh especially more than the other one where it's trapped in the corner this can be anywhere on the entire back rank so it's just better um and for what it is it's decent at number 24 i have a bit of a surprising pick the fool's mate this comes very iconically after white plays f3 we play e5 and g4 by white is a horrible mistake allowing us to play queen h4 check and they die on move two now you might be thinking why did i place this so high because while i have gotten this position a couple of times it is very obviously rare and never going to happen to anyone playing anywhere near seriously however why i like it is past just the like just straight checkmate i like the attacking concepts and from there there is a ton of tactics that arise from the ideas of the fool's mate for example uh this position right here using the ideas from the fool's mate we have the beautiful tactic rook takes h7 and you win basically uh they cannot take back because then queen comes in and you get that same checkmate if knight takes 
then once again the same checkmate so you can see how it is very useful and basically anytime your opponent ever moves their f pawn up it is going to be very very common and useful however it is still the fool's mate so here it goes 23 i have the ready's mate this occurs when you have your rook on an open file and you can bring your bishop or very often your queen down onto that square and the enemy king will have nowhere to run uh while if you're thinking in this very strict way you'll probably rate this a lot lower as it is not super common however in conjunction with a lot of attacking ideas this idea of like moving a piece usually a bishop or a queen onto a square like that is very very common and as such this is where i'm rating it 22 i have the corner mate this occurs when you have a rook controlling a file like the g file and the enemy king is kind of trapped with a pawn and you know their king is trapped in the corner and you can move a piece very often a knight to check them at which point they will have nowhere to run and is a very nice checkmate in the corner um, once again on its own it doesn't stand extremely strong however it is useful in a lot of tactics like for example this puzzle right here very very fun the winning move here is queen takes f8 check because after they take back well now you have the perfect scenario knight comes in with check and it is a checkmate at 21, I have the smothered checkmate. This occurs when you have an enemy king that is completely, completely trapped by its own pieces, and you can move your knight in to play a check, and because it cannot move anywhere, it is a checkmate. In this case, you also have a nice pin on their bishop, so they cannot capture. Uh, this one, when you get it, oh my god, the feeling is incredible. The problem is when you get it this is a very rare checkmate uh and that is really its only flaw if this was more common it would be so awesome but sadly it is not number 20 i have the pillsbury mate this occurs when you have a fee and bishop and their g pawn is gone which means it is looking straight into their position and with that you can play a rook check that is very often a checkmate because it cannot run anywhere on its own not too useful but this one is much more a tactical possibility it is useful in a lot of attacks and sometimes it actually can stand on its own like in this position you have the beautiful win here rook takes g7 check king walks over uh but here a lot of people would play a move like rook takes f7 and see well we get this discovered check so it works right but they could just take our bishop and now we are the ones getting checkmated and we cry in a corner all alone instead here you can play the beautiful rook g8 check double check meaning they must capture the rook and now we get the pillsbury mate once again you can see how it is very fun but obviously it's not the strongest one here 19 this is mm, <clears throat> Number 19, the max lange mate. This is when you have an enemy king surrounded by pawns and you have a bishop of the opposite color controlling these two very important squares, meaning you can have a queen and bring it all the way in with a nice checkmate. There's not really anything wrong with this one. It's just a nice little pattern, um, but it does have some more complicated aspects to it, like this specific pattern I've gotten a couple of times. This is one here, the most natural thing it looks like is to move your queen in right away however they can run their king away at which point they're actually going to end up winning so instead here you can play the bishop check first that way now you back up to f7 get the bishop into the best position here with the discovered check and control in g6 king moves and queen drops in i've gone that a couple of times it's nothing too special it's just a nice little checkmate number 18 i have the opera mate this is when you have an enemy king and you have a bishop and a rook looking at the same square you can launch your rook all the way in with a nice checkmate it's not extremely common but it is a common enough and pretty good attacking concept and you know checkmate that will happen a lot but it is also very good because it will combine a lot in a lot of attacks like um here for example you have a fantastic tactic to win from the very famous opera game queen to b8 check point being after they take back with the knight well here now you have that perfect setup you can launch your rook all the way in and from here you are doing great with the uh, checkmate 
Number 17, I have the Legal's Mate coming from the Legal Trap, which you see right here, where we play Knight Takes on E5. The idea here being is that after they take our Queen, we can now play Bishop Takes F7 Check, King Must Walk Up, and now Knight to D5 Check here, and we have beautiful harmony with three pieces, and the King literally cannot go anywhere. It is completely trapped. And that is a great checkmate. While not super common, it is a beautiful checkmate. And as such, this is where I'm rating it. And also, the ideas actually come up more often than you think. At number 16, I have the Scholar's Mate. This is also known as the form of checkmate, where you get the bishop and the queen looking at the f7 pawn. And if black is not careful, you will get a very quick checkmate. Now, I might be thinking, isn't this really only useful to players under a thousand elo that are still playing the wayward queen attack that is true because g6 here and it looks like all of our dreams are going away but like i said i'm not thinking about these just as the checkmate i'm also thinking about the tactical ideas and with the wayward queen attack i'm not thinking just about that i'm thinking about all of the scholars mate and there are so many situations where the bishop and the queen come out to attack the f7 pawn where it is extremely useful and very good and as such this is where i'm rating the scholar's mate number 15 i have the greco's mate this is when the enemy king is in the corner and you have a bishop peering directly into them and you can move your rook onto the h file or your queen and get a nice checkmate there's nothing really wrong here it's just a nice little pattern and can also be compounded quite well into a lot of attacking ideas when their king is on the king side like this for example in this uh puzzle here you are completely winning with the beautiful shot queen takes g6 because now this is extremely powerful and if they capture back we now have the greco mate with the simple rook to h2 and we are completely winning number 14 i have the blind swine mate this occurs when you have two connected rooks on the seventh meaning you can play this check king has to walk over you can play the other check king must walk back and they can bring the other rook in with this very nice two rook check mate it's a very fun pattern and if you can get it in your game it is so awesome you're probably gonna crush black almost always my problem with it is that as you go higher in elo like maybe let's say above 1600 people very rarely let you get the rooks onto the seventh rank at which point this checkmate is going to be very 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 rare for you to get however it is still a very strong thing Number 13, I have the Damiano mate. This is against a castled king. You have a pawn on g6, and you can send your own queen all the way in, and they cannot do anything. A very nice checkmate. The pawn covers the other escape square, and uh, yeah, it's just a fun little combination, and it also has some nice tactics, like for example, in this position, you have a beautiful way to win, that being rook to h1 check. King has to move over. You sack the rook. Then you sack the other rook because at the end of the day, now you can get your queen in with a nice checkmate. Number 12, I have the railroad mate. This happens when you have a rook and a queen and kind of move them in a railroad and you're like a train that goes along it by playing queen to f3 check. The king, because we're covering all this, must drop back. You can now play this check. The king must draw back. The queen now comes up once again. The king must draw back. You can now play the rook check, and you see how we move in the rail, and eventually we get to the checkmate. It's a fun pattern, very useful in end games, but outside of it, does not have a ton of uh, practicality or use in tactics, but on its own, still stands very strong. Number 11, I have the Swallowtail Mate. This is a queen and king checkmate where you play a check. And these two squares are going to be covered either by your own pieces or likely their pieces. And you deliver a nice checkmate. I mean, nothing really to say to this one. It's going to be useful in a ton of attacks and also on its own is quite nice. Entering the top 10, I have the triangle mate. This occurs when you have an enemy king. It has one pawn or some piece covering the square, meaning you can play a move here queen check with the rook as well and with this you are covering all of the squares and you can mate them very very easily and this is very similar to the railroad uh, checkmate but the idea here is that they cannot move back because it's covered very useful very common let's move on 
Number nine, I have the Dovetail Mate. Pretty simple, this one happens when you have an enemy king surrounded by two pieces, usually pawns, and here you can play a move like queen to f4 check. We form a dovetail foot pattern like so, and here the king would have nowhere to run, and you get a nice checkmate. I mean, it's very simple, it's very common, it's useful in so many attacks. Let's move on, it is great. Number eight, I have the lollies mate. When the enemy has their pawns like this, you can get your own pawn or potentially a bishop onto the f6 square, and then your queen comes in, and this is unstoppable. Normally, this would go a bit lower, but this one in particular is very strong because once you get to this position, black is kind of dead. As in, even if it was black's turn here, it's white, so we can play the checkmate, but even if it was black's turn, they would have literally no way to actually stop us and because of that it is so powerful in so many tactics because black often cannot do anything to prevent it even if it is their move. Number seven, I have the kill box mate. This is when you have the queen and the king like so and you can then send a rook in with a very nice checkmate. It's not super unique, but it comes up so often. It is extremely useful in so many end games and so many attacks and as such it must go here. Number six, I have a bit of a loose one. This is the H file mate. This is when you have a position like this where you have a lot of pressure on the enemy king. And what you can do is you can sacrifice a piece most often to open up the H file or if it is already open, the idea here is that now if the open H file, the amount of checkmates that will come from this is honestly just kind of insane. And after the king drops back, your queen can come in, they're going to die on the H file one way or another. Most likely they can move their queen a little bit and the H file checkmate happens. The H file is such an important attacking concept and also very often the checkmate because black will often have no way to stop it and as such it must go in number six. Number five, I have the iconic bishop queen battery mate. This is when you have the bishop and the queen on a battery looking directly at the king most often when they are castled like so, and you can launch in with a very nice checkmate. And I mean, really what to say, this is so widespread, I have won many games doing this, I'm sure millions, uh, millions and millions games have been won with this exact battery. And the good thing from here is that while on its own it's very strong, it also is great in so many tactics because the pressure you have here is incredible. Like in this position, this pressure is so strong, the only piece they have defending is with their knight, and here you can win with a very fun tactic knight d7 a fork of their queen and their knight because if they capture then we have checkmate and if they try to move their king or sorry their queen then we take with check pawn takes back and once again a checkmate and we are completely winning here very widespread incredible pattern number four i have the lawn mower mate i think this is one of the first checkmates i ever learned this is when you have two rooks against an enemy king or rook and a queen and what you can do here is you can kind of go like this you can go like the lawn mower you control two files at a time their king must drop back and now you move the other one in and this is such a core and important uh, like checkmate pattern to know. If you don't know this, you're going to lose at chess. You're going to lose many, many games. They can run their king closer, and they cannot do anything, and they're going to lose eventually. This is extremely important in the end game. While not super uh, important in other aspects, it is so important in the end game that it must go at number four. And as such, it is just such an incredible tactic. Number three, I have the rook and king checkmate. This is so important. You, you cannot get past like maybe a thousand elo without knowing this. Uh, I mean, the idea here is you can get your king in opposition of theirs, controlling all the squares, and then you can play rook with a check. They must back up. And from here, you can keep on going. And the checkmate continues. Here you can play king d5. Uh, if they go back in opposition, once again, the check. There's basically no worry here. And once you know this, you're going to have so much more power in your end games because you actually know how to win them in a scenario like this. And once you do know how to do it, it becomes very easy. They must eventually go to the corner, at which point you have the nice checkmate. Coming in at number two, I have the back rank checkmate. Extremely important, this one is. It happens when the enemy king is trapped behind three of its own pawns, and you can launch your rook or your queen down there, 
and they have no way to get out. It is often going to be a very fun checkmate. The reason I rate this so high is that one, it is extremely important at the beginner, intermediate, and advanced. It is extremely important no matter what level you are, which is not the case with so many checkmate and tactical patterns. And also, it is so many branches, so many tactical ideas that branch from it. For example, in this position right here, you have the very important winning move, queen takes on e5. Here, the checkmate or the back ring checkmate still applies. Even though they've pushed a pawn, you have a bishop that's covering that. And if they try to take back, well then your rook can launch in and you have the very nice checkmate. So many ideas, so important, it must come in at number two. And at number one, I have the king and queen mate. This is so extremely important. You really cannot be above like 900 ELO unless you know how to do this. I mean, I, need I really explain it? It is so extremely important. You cannot win a chess game unless you know how to do this pattern. And as such, it must go in the number one slot. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe for more videos. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.